So I have found that I actually take baths more in the summertime than I do in the winter, which I think is probably weird for most people because it makes sense that you're in the bathtub in the winter when it's cold. And for me, it's 9,000 degrees out. And what I wanna do is go take a bath and have lots of bubbles and read a book. And that's weird. And I get that completely. Now, I'm not talking about bubble bath for a random reason today. Only sometimes I do that. Uh, we're making bubble bath today, but not just any type of bubble bath. We're making solid bubble bath. And before I get into how we make it, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudsers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today on 365 Days of Soap, we're not exactly making soapy things, we're making bubbly things. We're making solid bubble bath. Solid bubble bath is a really fun product to incorporate into you know, your line if you're a soap maker, or into your life if you're not, for a number of reasons. The biggest reason for me is that it's eco-friendly, it's very green in its production and its you know, elimination of a single-use plastic, which is awesome. And for skin-loving purposes, I tend to love solid bubble bath a whole lot more over the liquid variety anyway. So we're gonna show you our process today the stuff that we do and the ingredients that we use to make our solid bubble bath, which, but you know, I'm gonna stop talking about it now because I'm gonna tell you all about it in the video, so let's go. It is bubble bar day, or, you know, as we are legally allowed to say, solid bubble bath. So we have uh, the cocoa butter that's been met melted down, and then we are adding the glycerin to that and also the scent blend and this particular scent blend for the one that she's making is one that oh it's a blackberry that's right for the kids line because we were making the smarty suds right now so it's a six pack of kids solid bubble bath and so they're kind of kid you know themed scents and then you also put the poly in the poly is going to be really important for the micas because you want to make sure that the micas will actually disperse in the water and color the tub and not just leave kind of, you know, glittery bits hanging out along the sides of your tub wall, really. And when you mix that all in, it creates a very cool kind of gel-like consistency. It gets thicker. And once it is thickened up, you then add in the cocoa betaine, which will help with the bubbling process of the whole thing, which is, you know, Cool. So those are all the liquid ingredients that will be added to the dry ingredients during the mix. The dry ingredients have already been put into the KitchenAid. So what we have going on in there, we have a 4.4 ounces of baking soda and 3.5 ounces of SLA, SLSA. We also have in there 1.25 ounces of cream of tartar, which I played with these recipes until I could get the, you know, the firmness and the stability that, you know, the cream of tartar sort of, you know, requires. Uh, but not have to use so much because so many recipes have massive amounts of cream of tartar in them and that is an expensive product like I buy all of my stuff in massive bulk like 55 gallon drums of oils and all the whatever so I get really good prices but cream of tartar uh, it's it is still expensive no matter where you get it so it's nice to be able to be to use less and uh, in order to use less, I also put in 0.9 ounces of cornstarch into this. So that helps up helps with the stability and the, uh, you know, the, the bubble bar's ability to get hard and you know hold up on its own and whatever shape you're making it really well. Now this particular batter here, you can see it's all really well incorporated. It's getting nice and smooth, but it's also very runny. And so we add in a little bit more baking soda during the mix until it clumps up 
into one nice big ball that is workable sort of like um, like biscuit dough would be a really good comparison that's kind of what you want so it needs to be a little sticky but not not super sticky you need to be able to mold it obviously or shape it and form it now this recipe that I just said is totally good to use for uh, the bubble bar rolls like the jelly rolls if you want to do the two colors and that's cool I don't I don't do that for my my bubble bars I I don't know I used to but the whole I no I just I don't do it so we do the smarty suds instead and I love the smarty suds so they're very very cute they look like they actually replaced our soap tarts from back in the day because the kids line had a lot of soap but we were pretty light on the bubbling and you know bath type things so we changed the soap tarts out for smarty suds in the naming but get basically kept the same look of them and so they look like giant sweet tarts essentially which is you know cool because also now it looks like a smarty so smarty so yeah, yeah that and uh, this consistency is really good this is going to be a great consistency to kind of work into a nice smooth ball and Georgia is going to put baking soda on her hands much like you would do if you were working with a biscuit dough you're gonna put flour on your hands to keep it from sticking to you too terribly much and you're gonna knead it and work it into a nice smooth ball and then you're going to flatten it out on the counter and for our purposes we are cutting it into little discs for the smarty suds so yeah that is a really good consistency for your bubble bars it's not too sticky but it's not so firm that you know you have way too much baking soda in it so the bubble is not going to be nearly as good as it should be now again we, we pat this out again a lot like biscuit dough and also a lot like biscuit dough you don't want to work with the with the dough too terribly much so I remember when I was a kid and my mom and my grandma were teaching me how to make biscuits they would they were so like they were like almost militant about this right like you can only roll out like re-roll the biscuit dough like one time and before the biscuits get tough or whatever so I don't know I make biscuits now and I don't do that I re-roll I roll it out as many times as I want and I haven't noticed tough biscuits but you know whatever sort of the same concept with bubble bars because it can really only handle there's enough elasticity in these to only handle a few pat downs before you know it just doesn't form into its little discs anymore but you know you essentially do this over and over and over again until you have all of your cute little until we have all of our cute little smarty suds ready to go and then they will set overnight in open air to dry and firm before we put them in the packaging. Okay, now on to the packaging. Now, this is one of the instances, for the most part, we try to keep things very eco um, in the shop. We, we want to use minimal packaging. So we, you know, we don't always cigar wrap our soaps, but if we do, that's usually all they get is just a cigar band that, you know, I make myself and you know design and do all the things and then also the sometimes a few of our products have like actual boxes but they're craft boxes whatever this is one of the few examples of an actual plastic in the uh, in my line just because we haven't there's not a better way really to package these because they do need to be sealed up you don't want to have your bubble bars out in open air for too terribly long because they do start to lose some of their potency, much like bath bombs, you should protect them. Uh, but yeah, so we use plastic. And also it's it's cute, look how cute it ends up looking when you do a little thing and you roll them all together. Now these are colors of the rainbow. She made the other five colors off camera and they all have different scents in them. Now you see the one that's supposed to be blue next to the purple, it this color. And this was a bubblegum scent actually for the blue and bubblegum bubblegum discolors which is really annoying and that's you know that sucks but I normally I think that the, the scent yes normally the scent that we put into this is actually a blueberry for the blue but 
she forgot. So she did the scent that we use or we used to use for the kids bombs. I don't think we even have a bubble gum in the kids line anymore either for the same discoloring reasons but it's okay because it still looks cute and it's still awesome and it smells nice and you know it's cool but just keep that in mind there are some scent blends that will discolor in all of your products be they soaps or bath bombs or bubble bath really and yeah once she has all of these that's so cute isn't it adorable once she has all of these all mixed or uh, packaged up she will then take the heat gun to all of them and make sure that they're nice and sealed and just give it a more professional finish and then we put a label on it that says what they are you know the ingredients and all that jazz and yeah the uh yeah oh gosh those are just so cute i'm sorry i'm just looking at the little soap tarts it's one of my favorite or the smarty suds it's one of my favorite days ever when we make new bubble bath and also it's one of uh scout's favorite days ever because when we make new bubble bath that means that she gets to take a bubble bath which is you know awesome because who doesn't like bubble baths no one is the answer to that you love bubble baths that's why you're here <laughs> so and look at the I love that like the uh, I don't know what I forget what it's called it's an actual like baking term or whatever but like the feet of macarons when they are when you set to rest them and you need to do that so they develop those cool little feet there where there's like aeration in the yeah you just she just naturally gets that in her bubble bar recipe and that's awesome it's like lamination or something somebody please tell me what the word is for that in baking because it's killing me but yeah no so these guys it's a cool reasonably quick process honestly with you know this is something that can be done in a day's time and packaged and ready to go so that's always nice the biggest you know downfall of bubble bars in life is the cost of the ingredients because like I said there are some very pricey ingredients in this and you know I talked about it yesterday in the uh, unicorn bubble bath bubble bomb video about the cost of you know SLSA versus SLS like yes SLSA is way more expensive but SLS is also a huge skin irritant and SLSA is very gentle surfactant so it's worth it to go with the uh, the better the better product in this case for sure and now these are all ready to be shrink wrapped so it's just a quick hit with the heat gun you don't want to get it on there for too terribly long because again you're just using regular plastic wrap and what this is doing is it's sort of adhering to the bubble bars solid bubble bath there underneath and getting rid of any of the extra you know wrinkles really in the in the plastic wrap and making it look you know a little bit more professional and awesome but again you don't keep the heat on it too terribly long because you don't want it to all melt and you know create a hole in the packaging so you have air going to the uh, bubble bars themselves and so yeah that's just that's the process and it's it's cute again it makes it look way way more professional so that's always a win although I don't know if I should be talking about professional whatever because half the time I don't wrap any of my things it's just they leave so quickly but yeah there they there they are all shrink wrapped up and ready to go and there's the kind of finished product there they look so super cute and they all weigh the same which is important especially if you're you know making for you know consumer purchasing and all the jazz and yeah they are adorable good job George May that's day 119 the solid bubble bath and now you know Scout gets to take a bubble bath tonight and this is her whenever she does she is always on cloud nine with these epic clouds of bubbles and they are really epic look at that And there it is, solid bubble bath. They're super cute, right? I really, really love the design of these. The look of all six of the colors together, you know, in rainbow order just makes me super duper happy. And as you can see, Scout, whenever it's time to make new bubble baths, she is the happiest kid on the planet because she absolutely loves the performance of the, uh, the solid bubble bath. And I get why. Now, this particular recipe is something that you can use to make like the jelly roll bubble bath. Thing. 
uh, without any problems. It's a very easy recipe to work with, doesn't get too sticky, so it actually does allow you to do the roll. I just don't do my bubble bars that way, so whatever. If you're interested in this solid bubble bath, you can totally find it on the website at soapandclay.com. And if you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there, do the things, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And if you're interested in more soapy antics, subscribe to the channel, just hit the little button there because we are doing this every single day and I would love for you to be a part of the ride so thank you for being a part of the ride today and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!